Good day guys and welcome back to another video on functions. Today we're going to be looking at this f colon square bracket negative 3 comma 2 round bracket arrow to the right with a funny looking capital R comma f of x equals x squared. What does this mean and what is the domain and range of this particular function? So we're going to learn about function notation and how to find the domain and range of this stuff and what all this stuff here basically means today on MathBase. So we're just going to work through this from left to right. Starting with f, this is just the name of the function. There's nothing really special going on here. If you call it, if you're going to use g of x, then you would say g at the front here. The colon just means this function is being defined as something. So nothing really special going on there. So you would read it as f is defined as something, something, something. So the next bit is the domain, which is said to be x being between negative 3 and 2. So you can have the x value of negative 3, you can have negative 2, you can have negative 2.5, you can have 0, 1, 1.1, you can have all those numbers, but you cannot have 2 because 2 is not included. That's what the round bracket means. So the square bracket means you include the number that's attached to it. The round bracket means you don't include it. And if you're having trouble remembering which one's which, think of it like this, like if you drop a ball on top of each bracket, which one does the ball stay on, right? Because if the ball drops on the square bracket, it doesn't roll off. If you drop it on the round bracket, it rolls off. Now the arrow with the R in the middle, this stuff is not really, you don't really need to know it for VCE level, but it's known as the codomain. And you can think of it as a filter for all the numbers that are coming in from X. And I'll discuss this in a bit more detail soon. But for now, just think of it as a filter for your numbers. And moving on to the last bit, f of x equals x squared. So f of x is just the way we would write the actual function uh, name in the equation on the left side. This is the subject. And the last bit, x squared, that's just your rule. So that's just telling you how you're going to find some y values using the x value. So let me just explain briefly on what the codomain really is. Think of the codomain as a fishing net, and you're trying to catch some fish with it. Depending on the size of the holes in the net, smaller ones will fall through. While some of these fish will get caught, the net itself would be represented by some kind of number set that we're using. Say, for example, I used capital Z. This means integers, or whole numbers, like negative 1, 0, 10, 5, and so on and so forth. So those are like the bigger fish and they will get caught in the net, but the smaller fish will fall through, and these would be the numbers like uh, decimal numbers, like 1.1, negative 5.3, 2 on 5, square root of 2, pi, etc. Because these numbers are not whole numbers. In the case of our function, the codomain uses the capital letter R. This means real numbers, which in the context of maths methods would mean everything that you would deal with, every kind of number. So this net would have very small holes in it, which means this net will catch everything. Every type of fish, every type of number, however you want to look at that. And once you've caught these things, you want to then turn them into coordinates, which you can put on a graph. So let's have a look at that now. What we're going to do is set up a table for finding our y values based on some x values that we're going to choose. Now remember, the domain is negative 3 to 2, but it does not include 2. So I'm just going to write down some x values from negative 3 up to 2. And I'll just put a line here just to indicate that last column of numbers is technically not a point on this graph. Now to find your y values, you would use your rule x squared. So for example, if you use negative 3 as your x value, negative 3 to the power of 2 is positive 9. Now if you just work that through your table, you should find 4, 1, 0, 1, and 4 for the other five x values. Now that we have these, we are ready to draw a graph. So plot in all the points, with the one exception that 2 comma 4 is not included, and so we would draw an open circle, which looks a bit like a donut, for that point. Drawing through it reveals that we have a parabola starting from negative 3 comma 9, finishing at 2 comma 4, but keeping in mind that that last point on the right is not included. Now that we have this graph, it's going to be very easy to find the domain and range. What you want to do is flatten your curve based on the x-axis, like as if you're stepping on it or squashing it, and we'll see that we have points everywhere between negative 3 up to 2, 
but again, two is not included. So if you're drawing this on, on a number line, we would see that there's a closed circle on the left and an open circle on the right. So we can write it as a square bracket with negative three, comma two with a round bracket. And we really expected this because that was given to us in the function notation itself. As for the range, you want to find the y values. So you want to squash the graph together like as if you're trying to catch a mosquito or something. And we will see that the graph involves everything from zero to nine. With the one exception where the y value at four is not included, right? But on the left side of the parabola, there is a y value there for four. And so since there is at least one instance of it being included, we would say that we have all the values from zero to nine, including four. And so it's just a straight line through with two closed dots on the endpoints, meaning it's just a square bracket with a zero comma nine with another square bracket. And the way you write these out at the end is to say DOM of f of x is from negative three to two with a square and a round bracket. And the range would be RAN of f of x equals to 0, 0,9, both using square brackets. And you can say the domain is from negative 3, including, up to 2, not including. And the range is from 0, including, up to 9, including. And that's about it. It's important for you guys to note that the domain does not necessarily reflect what you will get for your range. One of the most common mistakes students make in the final VCE exam, in the multiple choice section particularly, is that when they're given some kind of domain for a parabola, like x squared, a lot of them will make the mistake of converting the domain into the range by saying negative 3 becomes 9 and 2 becomes 4, and then rearranging that to say that's the range is from 4 to 9. But that's obviously wrong here. If you look at the graph, you can clearly see that the range goes from the lowest point, which is 0, up to the highest point, which is 9. So obviously, the numbers don't necessarily correspond from the domain to the range, and neither do the brackets. In other words, if you want to get the domain, it's generally given to you in the function notation, so you just need to pick it out from there. As for the range, you got to get that from drawing the graph. It's the safest, most assured way to do it. And since most of the time these questions are given in the multiple choice section or the CAS active section of your exam, it's easy enough for you to just use your CAS to draw the graph and then grab the range from there. All right, so I hope that all made sense to you guys. What do you think of function notation and domains and ranges? And have you struggled with that kind of stuff before? Let me know in the comments below. And please like the video if you found it helpful. Also, make sure you click that subscribe button to join the channel if you haven't done so yet. And ring the bell to get notified for when the next video comes out. Thanks guys, have a good one, and I'll see you next time.